Sunday Creative and in this video we're going back in time to 1666 to relive what happened during the Great Fire of London. Now before we start just make sure that you've got enough space around you because we will be moving around quite a lot and to add to our movement I'm going to be using some material to represent a flame so if you want to take a moment just to grab a piece of material maybe a scarf or a ribbon that you can use during the video then you can do that or if you want to make yourself a fire stick now it's really really simple I've just used some ribbon on the end of a stick that I've attached using tape so that when you move the stick just like this it kind of makes a sound of fire and flames so if you want to grab yourself some material or if you want to make yourself a fire stick for this video just click pause and then come back and join us when you're ready otherwise let's get started now we're going to start off by meeting some of the people that we would have found in London in 1666 but I want to test your knowledge a little bit first too so what was the name of the man who wrote the diary that helps us learn so much about the Great Fire of London? What was his name? I'm going to give you three seconds to have a think. Three, two, one. His name was Samuel Pepys. Now, well done if you got the answer right, if you knew who it was. If not, don't worry. Congratulations to you because you've learned something new already. So give yourself a little pat on the back. So I'd like you to make me a statue of Samuel Pepys writing his diary. It might look a little something like this. Let me see yours. Very good, everyone. All right, so we've got Samuel Pepys. Next up, let's meet the king. Who can tell me the name of the king in 1666? I'll give you three seconds again to have a little think. Three, two, one. Did you get it? His name was King Charles II. So I'd like you to create me a statue of King Charles II. Maybe you're wearing a crown, or perhaps you're standing very tall, or perhaps you're telling people what to do, giving a royal wave. It's entirely up to you. Next up, we're gonna meet the man who owned the bakery. Now we know that the fire started in a bakery in Pudding Lane, on the 2nd of September. But what was the name of the baker? I'm going to give you three seconds again. Three, two, one. His name was Thomas Farriner. So could you please make a statue of Thomas Farriner preparing some bread? Very good, everyone. Lastly, and this one's a bit more tricky, so don't worry if you don't know this one. What was the name of the Lord Mayor of London in 1666? What was his name? Three, two, one. His name was Lord Mayor Bloodworth. Again, well done to you if you knew the names of those four people. And if not, congratulations on learning four new names already. Now, Lord Mayor Bloodworth is important because when the fire started, because it did start in the middle of the night, he was fast asleep. And when people tried to wake him up, he said, no, don't worry about it. The fire will put itself out. You see, he was really worried that if he pulled down the houses, it would cost him lots of money to rebuild and he'd have to deal with lots of arguments between the people that owned the houses. So he didn't want to have anything to do with it and he thought that the fire would just put itself out. Unfortunately, he was very, very wrong. But can you make me a statue of our sleeping Lord Mayor Bloodworth? Go! <laughs> Very good, everyone. All right, let's play a game with our four characters. So you've got your four statues. Let's have a quick practice of them. Samuel Pepys, King Charles II, Thomas Farriner, and Lord Mayor Bloodworth. Now, to add to this game, if I say River Thames, I want you to come down on the floor and you're going to row your boats along the Thames. Of course, the Thames is the river that runs through London and is one of the ways that the Londoners were escaping the fire. 
If I say city walls, the city walls surrounded London, they had lots of gates in them, and again was another way that our Londoners were escaping from the fire on horses and carts. If I say city walls, I want you to do a slow motion run towards the city walls. Fantastic. All right, are you ready to play everyone? <sighs> Give yourselves a little shake out. Oh, let's see how quick you can be making these statues. River Thames! <laughs> City walls! <laughs> Samuel Pepys! <laughs> King Charles II. Thomas Farriner. <laughs> Lord Mayor Bloodworth. City walls. Amazing. Now, as you can see, I did put a little bit of movement into those statues. So if you want to play the game again, if you want to pause the video and carry on playing with other people in your house, just to really, really remember the names of those four people, then that's absolutely fine. Otherwise, it's time for us to go into our time machines. So everyone, join me down here on the floor. Now, safety first, we're gonna pop our helmets on, buckle up, clip. And can you write in the year that we are going back to? So we are going back to 1666. And which city are we going back to? If you can remember. Push the button for our city. We are going to London. All right, everyone, we're ready to go. Oh, joining in. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Phew. We made it, everyone. If we've left anyone behind, be sure to go back and grab them now so that we don't leave anyone behind at home. Make sure they're all joining in the adventure. All right, helmets off, everyone. Unbuckle, clip, and it's time to explore. Now, the weather in London in 1666 is very hot and very dry and very, very windy. And it is the night of the 1st of September going into the 2nd of September. And the Farriners are fast asleep. So everyone, can you lay down on the floor fast asleep just like our Farriners? Now. Whilst they were asleep, after a busy day baking bread for the king, a strong wind swept through the window, knocking a tiny ember, a small flame, out of the oven. And remember, our ovens, not like the ones we have today, the baker's ovens would have been open, made of brick and stone with an open fire inside. So this tiny ember is blown out of the fire and onto the floor of the bakery. The floor is covered with straw. And so the flame becomes a small fire and it starts to spread through the floor of the bakery. Now, one of Farriner's servants was sleeping downstairs and was suddenly awoken by the sound of these flames. He ran up the stairs to where the Farriner slept and he woke them all up. Everyone jump up on your feet for me. The Farriner's could smell the smoke and it was making them, <coughs> it was making them cough. <coughs> All right, everyone, I want you to join in exactly with my movements. The foreigners looked down the stairs, trying to run out of the house, but the ground floor of the bakery was covered in flames. So they swung open their window. And because all of the houses were built so close together, they were able to climb out of their window and into their neighbor's window. They ran down the stairs of their neighbor's house, out into the street, and they shouted, fire, fire. Fire! Fire! I hope you were shouting nice and loudly, but as they looked back up at their house, they realised that one of their maids was still in the window. Show me your best scared faces, everyone. Oh, oh no. 
You see, the maid was really scared of heights and didn't want to climb out of the window. And unfortunately, she became one of the first victims of the Great Fire. But the foreigners continued to raise the alarm. In your loudest voices, everyone, let me hear you shouting, Fire! 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 Amazing! All right, grab your flames for me, everyone, either your fire stick or your material. Now, we know that our flame started very, very small as a tiny ember on the straw. But very quickly, it grew and it grew and it grew and it made its way up the stairs of the Farriner's house. Now, because all of the houses were made of wood, the fire spread very, very very quickly. The houses were made of wood and they were very, very dry because of the long, hot summer. And it was very windy, pushing the fire very quickly to the next house and to the next house and to the next house, spreading through Pudding Lane, spreading to the north and east of Pudding Lane, making its way through London, getting faster and faster and faster. Really explore this movement. Have fun with it as you move these flames around. Fantastic. Now, the Londoners were beginning to panic. They knew they had to put the fire out. They didn't have fire engines like we have them today. They did have fire pumps, but they weren't strong enough. Their pipe work made of wood and other materials had melted and was being demolished by the flames. So there was very little water left in Pudding Lane. So some people made a chain from the River Thames all the way up to the fire, passing buckets of water along. So everyone, grab your leather bucket of of water for me and we're going to pass it along to the next person and to the next person and throw it on the flame and go back to the river grab some more pass it along good and next person and the next person throw it on the flames one more time grab your bucket of water being careful not to spill a drop as you pass it down the line the Londoners were becoming exhausted. The flames were so hot, they were so big, and the wind was so strong that it was moving very, very quickly. So they also tried to use fire hooks. A fire hook is a big, long stick with a hook at the end of it. They use this to pull down the house from the roof to the floor. So hold on to your fire hooks for me, everyone. And you're going to hook it onto the roof of your house and pull it down and up. It was very, very tiring work. This was one of the things that they had asked our sleeping Lord Mayor Bloodworth to do on that first morning. Some people say if they'd have pulled down just four houses on that first day, the fire might not have been so great. But unfortunately, we'll never know because we're, as we know, Lord Mayor Bloodworth said, no, it'll put itself out. So the fire hooks weren't enough. Passing the water in buckets wasn't enough. By pulling down the houses, they wanted to create a space between one house and another. This is called a fire break. What's it called? A fire break. Fantastic. And to create this fire break, pulling down the houses just wasn't enough. They couldn't pull the houses down fast enough. The fire was jumping from one house to another quicker than they could pull them down. They didn't know what to do. They were exhausted. So people began to gather their most precious belongings. Have a think. What would you take with you? What's most important to you? If you could save one item, what would it be? People could only take what they could carry. They took them either to the river, onto the boats, or they would take them to the horses and carts to move out of the city. They had one more option left to them. And this idea came from a very brave garrison, like a soldier, of the Tower of London, who used, who can guess, what did he use to block the houses? Have a think. He used 
gunpowder to blow up the houses so that the fire didn't reach the Tower of London because the Tower of London was full of gunpowder. Imagine what would have happened if the fire had caught up with it. Luckily it didn't and our Tower of London is still standing but this gave King Charles the second, a very, very good idea. In your very best King Charles the second voice, can you please say, blow up the houses? Let me hear you, everyone. Blow up the houses. Your turn. Amazing, fantastic. So that's what they did. I want you to gather yourself up in a ball just like this. You look like a barrel of gunpowder. And on the count of three, we're going to do a huge explosion, blowing up three, four, or even five houses at a time. Are you ready, everyone? Three, two, one. <laughs> amazing. By blowing up the houses, the Londoners were creating an even bigger, what was that space called again? What was the word? An even bigger fire break. And because of this, by the 5th of September, the fire was beginning to slow down. So that on the 6th of September, the great fire was almost out. Grab your material again or your fire sticks and bring them up nice and high. So from the 2nd through to the 3rd, to the 4th, to the 5th of September, that strong wind, the wooden houses, the streets so close together had pushed the fir fire further and further through London, destroying everything in its path. But by the 6th of September, the wind was slowing down. That's it, slow down your flames. And beginning to put the fire out. The fire could no longer jump from house to house because of the fire breaks. So by this last day, the 6th of September, there were just lots of small fires around the city, much more easy to contain. The great fire itself had been put out. Now, after the fire, the people gathered in the open spaces and the parks, creating shelters and tents for themselves. 13,500 houses had been destroyed, 87 churches and St Paul's Cathedral, all destroyed by the Great Fire of London, starting from that tiny, tiny ember from the oven. Now, King Charles II encouraged the Londoners to move out of London to other areas of England to begin their lives again, to start their trade somewhere else, because he knew it would take so long to rebuild the city. He also set up very special fire courts so that he could settle arguments between different landowners and homeowners. Samuel Pepys wrote in his diary that the price of bread, horses and carts and boats had all gone up as people needed these desperately. St Paul's Cathedral took many years to be rebuilt. Perhaps you can do some research as to why a stone building like St Paul's Cathedral burnt down. It was redesigned by a man named Sir Christopher Wren and was rebuilt by 1711. So it took a long time to build it again. And the rest of the city was rebuilt too. So when they rebuilt the city, did they rebuild the houses out of wood or bricks and stone? Have a guess. They rebuilt it from bricks and stone. And did they build the houses close together or far apart? Three, two, one. Absolutely, they built them far apart. And finally, those narrow, narrow, narrow streets. Did they rebuild the houses on this narrow street or did they try to make them wider, bigger? They absolutely made them wider. All these changes were made to ensure that another fire, like the Great Fire of London, 
didn't happen again for a very, very long time. All right, everyone, we've had quite the adventure today, so I think it's time for us to go home again. So back into your time machines, please, everyone. Helmets on, buckle up, clip, and push the button for home. Home! Ready? Join in, everyone. We don't want to leave anyone behind in 1666. Oh! 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 We made it, everyone. Helmets off. Unbuckle. I hope you've enjoyed travelling back in time with me all the way back to 1666. Well, what was your favourite fact from today? Perhaps you could do some more research on it and learn about it in more detail. But I'd like to give you one more extra special task. Can you create your own version of Samuel Pepys diary? You could write it or draw it or perform it just like we've done here today and share it with everyone that you know. And if you've enjoyed this session today, this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, One Day Creative Education, and again, share it with everyone that you know. And we hope to see you again for some more videos and more creative learning in the future. I've been Emma. Bye-bye. <laughs>